Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On the series strategy game, and we are returning to Let's Play of Democracy 4, where we're trying to turn the United States into a green utopia. And things are going relatively well, I have to say. So, we are now in our second term. So, just last time, we did win the election, and that is due to a couple of things that, that we actually managed to get rid of, like alcohol consumption um, and obesity. No, wait. Obesity is still there, but obesity is coming down, so I'm very happy about that. And I think respiratory diseases are also slowly coming down, so things are looking fine in our country. Nevertheless, of course, the environment is still a bit stressed. It's much better than we when we started, when it was at around 30%. It's around 70 now, so that looks pretty n nifty to me. I'm very happy about that, but we can do better still. So we want to use the remainder of our second term in office here uh, to really make an impact on the environment as such. I also want to look at the CO2 emissions here because they are nearly at zero, so we are nearly carbon neutral here, but not quite. Right, so let's see what we need to do. Uh, we've got um, a question about expanding public right of ways, uh, and that is basically walking around the countryside and so on. Um, we're going to expand the right of way that is increasing Oh, love of socialists. Well, not so much farmers, though. Well, I suppose that's all right. Um, not a big deal for us, honestly. Right, so let's look at the remaining policies. As you can see, we've got 21 political power. We can save up to 42, so that's looking pretty nice, actually. Um, there are not that enormously many things that we still want to implement. I mean, synthetic meat research would be, would be kind of interesting because it would probably drive... Um, meat consumption a little bit differently and uh, there's carbon capture and storage that's pretty important to me um other than that though i don't think in the economy sector we don't have that much we would have mandatory micro generation that would also be a big boost to uh, electricity by our by our photovoltaic and stuff so that's nice organic farming it's not really that important and it's not even driving um vegetarian people to become uh, less meat based and, and more veggie so that would be interesting in terms of tax there is the co2 tax which a lot of you uh, or which some of you have actually uh, yeah pointed out that that would be an interesting one and um, everyone hates that a little bit capitalists in particular motorists and air travel goes down well that's interesting and it does have a chance of creating a corporate exodus so that would be hugely detrimental but energy efficiency and uh, would go up and CO2 emissions down. So, yeah, I think we want to probably implement that. And I do want to implement the Climate Change Adaption Fund. And that might actually be one of the first things that I do include over here. Or is it? In terms of policing, I don't think there's anything that we do need. Yeah, so I think that's fine. But one of the other things that we do need to consider is if we look at the environment over here, and if we sort that by strength, you can see some of the biggest effects are GDP. We can't do that much about this. Um, there's the car usage, which is hopefully coming down, but there's also the air travel. And I think the air travel is one of the things that we probably want to look at a little bit more closely because air travel in our country is pretty big. It's gonna be decreasing a little bit over time um, as the high speed rail subsidies do kick in over here. But it's a tiny shift, only four percentage points. So I think it would be great if we could reduce that a little bit. It would also reduce CO2 emissions by quite a bit um, and drive down. Well, it would drive up rail usage, wouldn't it? Yeah, if we reduce that. But the effect on the environment would be pretty nifty. So things that we could do is we could increase the airline taxes over here. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. But there are also other things that we could do, like, for example, do a frequent flyer tax. Air travel is going to go down, GDP is going to go down, Wealthies, wealthy people don't like that, socialists do love it, and environmentalists do love it. So, you know what, let's go ahead, let's do that over here, it's not too costly, air travel will go down dramatically, GDP will go down by two percentage points, which is pretty big, but nevertheless, um, I think the effect on air travel here is going to be very substantial, and I'm going to be happy with that. It's also going to give us some more money, which is definitely a nice thing to have. Well, anything else that we can do with our nine uh, percentage points over here? We could do CCS. Yeah, CCS what, might not be the worst idea. Fuel efficiency standards, I don't think I want that because it will drive up car usage. Electric car transition would be nice. Environmentalists would be happy about this. And this would actually drive up 
environmentalist membership. So you know what? We are going to go full on electric cars over here. Decrease uh, oil demand, decrease, uh, increase the uh, happiness of motorists actually, and make electric car transition very, very effective over here. So that's it. We have no more political uh, power. So let's see what's going um, on over here. So GDP is still, yeah, well, not really trending up, but it's still somewhat um, normal. Health is perfect. Unemployment is still kind of high. We actually want to decrease that probably. Um, crime though, basically crimeless and no poverty in our situation. Cyberbullying seems to be a problem, but not really, because it's not going to go over the star trigger, so we can ignore this one now. Um, and there is a demand from one of our donors. So Jordan Miller is insisting that you placate them by winter fuel subsidiaries. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I will not go for winter fuel subsidies because this is, as an economist, this is a pretty horrible idea, firstly. Secondly, yes, it does reduce poverty a little bit, but, but it does reduce poverty by specifically fueling the demand or increasing the demand for fuel. Uh, and that is definitely just not a good thing. You know, if people, even old people, even poor people sometimes have a choice between better isolation or more fuel, if you give them money for fuel, they will burn the fuel and they will not go for uh, the better insulation or anything. So, yeah, no, I don't want that. Uh, it would increase our compassionacy. Yes, it would do that. But it would decrease energy efficiency. So, I'm gonna say no and they will jump off. That's just it. Um, but, yeah. Gig economy pressure. So, yeah, a lot of people hate some event over here. So, that's not great. But uh, there's only so much that we can or want to do about that. Uh, because I think for now we are relatively happy about that. And increasing... <laughs> Somewhat interestingly, the religious people of all are the biggest threat to us, so we'll need to keep that in mind. Nevertheless, all in all, our popularity is pretty great over here, so I'm happy about that. Respiratory diseases are nearly, nearly gone, so that's nice to see. And obesity is also coming down, and that should give us a nice additional surplus very soon. Hospital overcrowding? Ooh, it seems like that could just about become a non-issue in, in the not-too-distant future. It's so, so close. It might even be below that already. I don't know. Maybe. Just maybe it's going to go away. Well, the deadly virus outbreak is going to go away, so I think that that should actually hopefully also go away. Brilliant. I like that. That's very, very nice to see, actually. So, yeah. What did we do last time? Oh, the air travel. Let's see whether that has an effect already. Well, yeah, it's dropping down a little bit. So that's nice to see. Does the environment go up? Yes, it does. So that's lovely to see. How about electric car transition? Is that uh, this one over here? Yeah. So yeah, that's booming. We have already done a hybrid cars in initiative and now we are transitioning to full on electric. So yeah, very nice to see that that is going down. Uh, and CO2 emissions are at zero. We are carbon neutral, my friends. So that already, I think, is, is a very great success over here. Very, very happy about that. Um, so honestly, we actually do not need a carbon tax. That would, it would just not do anything for us at this point. So, which is kind of kind of curious, but um, yeah, that's just where we are. So things are pretty good. Carbon storage, some of the same actually here with the carbon two emissions. I don't think we need that at all actually. So, yeah, that's it's basically fine, isn't it? So yeah, what I want to do then is the. Climate Change Adaption Fund. That is hugely expensive. So we have a surplus right now after cutting all of the military spending of 174 billion uh, US dollar per quarter. This has the potential of costing 127, but it will drive down uh, the effects of water shortages um, and all of that. So I think this is, this is going to be nice. It's also going to make people um, more happy and it's going to drive down unemployment, which is also going to be nice, I think, to see. You know what? Um, let's be serious about that. Let's spend pretty much all of our money on that and a good chunk of our political capital. But yeah, that's that's just that. And don't want to do anything that brings up car usage. I think that's just the wrong way to go about the problem. So yeah, I think this is fine. Honestly, all of this is, is okay. Plastic bag taxes, it's not going to make a big difference. So honestly, I think it's it's not that relevant. 
And yeah, carbon capture and storage, we don't need to do more on, on reducing CO2 emissions. We are fine. Which is curious to see. What? So big question is, can we do anything about the religious people? So either we do need to make them more happy because they are founding a terrorist group. So we have three chances of addressing that. Either we could drive down their membership, um, so try to make them, uh, uh, well, try to achieve the situation where there's a lot less of them, which we are currently actually doing with it in terms of our education. So that'd be nice. Secondly, we could try to improve their happiness, but these things do go do, do tend to go um, into opposite directions. So, yeah, and I'm I'm definitely not gonna reduce reduce the allowances here of of gay marriage. That is just simply not something that I'm probably ever gonna do in Democracy Four, unless I'm playing a really really evil person. So, right, can't change that really. Who? What else are you upset about though? I would, by, by the way, have expected the motorists here to be much more affected by that, but it appears the religious people are. Well, there's death penalty, there's family planning, there's GM ban, gender transition, abortion law. This is really touchy subjects that these people do care about, so I don't think that that is something that I want to do right now. And I don't think there's much that we can do to affect their likelihood of, of doing anything. What are you? Ah, oh, term length. Yeah, sure. Slightly better postal funding. All of this is maxed out, basically, so there's no nothing on the right side of this. State broadcaster, we could do that, but... I would actually bring up education a little bit, which is interesting. But yeah, you know what? Let's save up the political power here for a second. And a lot of things have gone away. So obesity has gone away and hospital overcrowding has gone away. So health would, would be pretty, if it wasn't maxed out already, would go up a lot. GDP is increasing, which is interesting because we have this frequent flyer tax here. <laughs> and still, our GDP is nearly maxed out. So we are a super ecological, super rich society at this point. And these things are going against each other, right? So you can see probably the environment here is going to go down probably next turn. Um, as the effect of the GDP is kicking in. And you can see this is sort of exponential, so it's it's a little bit weird, but we are fighting an uphill battle here because we've got such a great environment uh, that that is just a non-issue. And this will go away next turn as well, so ever so happy. Toxic waste dump, yeah, we are not gonna, we, we are not gonna allow the construction of, a uh, of, of that. That would just not work out at this point. Right, uh, let's look at the budget over here in this term. So, yeah, it's actually kind of interesting that the relative GDP has gone up all the time. So, our national GDP is, our national economy is doing fine, whereas the global economy was actually at a bit of a slump here for most of our uh, second, uh, well, first term over here. And it's only now recovering, and that means we are pushing up our overall commitments, while we're still running a, a, a surplus over here. Which is extremely interesting to see. Why are you upset? Because you're with patriots and capitalists? Yeah, I can see that that would make you upset. Yeah, but ultimately you'll be fine, I think, over time. So yeah, any any further further things that we do want to include over here? There's the carbon stuff. There's organic farming. I don't think organic farming in itself is necessarily a good thing. It's it's good if it respects, you know, sustainable farming principles, but it's not quite the same. So I'm, I'm happy to go with this as is. Right. All of this is is fine over here. I don't think we need any of that. We have we have doing fairly good over here. Compulsory yeah, well, that would drive our plant-based diets a little bit, and I'm happy about that. Obesity, well, we don't really need health, though, so honestly, that's that's pretty much fine. Public libraries would be pretty much universally accepted by everyone, so that's not a thing. Anything else that we want to do in terms of transport? Driverless cars are interesting, but it would also potentially increase... Uh, the well, it would lead to job losses and everything, so potentially not. 
Capitalists, murderers would be unhappy, commuter membership would go up, bus usage, bus usage would go up. Congestion charging, yeah, you're, you're gonna be fine. Car usage would go down, so that would be nice. I don't think I wanna go for, for industrial, uh, for, for driverless cars. Don't wanna go for fuel subsidies. We could close airports entirely. Would have a major impact on international trade and air travel, obviously. Foreign relations would go down, and tourism, immigration would go down, and GDP. This might be a little bit extreme. You know what? We are doing fine, so I don't think we need that. So, car usage would go down, environment would go up, electric car transition goes up. Yeah, okay, so banning any low MPG cars, I think, is, is a fine thing to do. Let's implement this. Um, let's max it out, I think, yeah. So basically car usage, that's going to be nice. And electric car transition is also going to go up. Happy about that. Perfectly fine with that. Tourism ad campaign, no, 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 no. We don't want that. Yeah, and anything, any other thing is is also... Well, oh, there was one more thing in transport. No, fuel efficiency standards would go, uh, would drive up car usage. So yeah, that's just not going to work. Respiratory disease gone. Happy about that. GDP is still improving. This is this is kind of kind of fun, um, and education is also going up. This is a perfectly lovely country to live in, except for the extremely high unemployment. But it's also coming down, so that's nice to see. And the world economy is slowly recovering. So actually, we're bringing down our debt as well because we're still running a surplus over here. So it's 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 a wonderful world, my friends. So you can see we've basically gotten rid of all of the negative effects. Only gig economy stays over here. Um, and that is basically an effect of, well, all of these things over here. So, yeah. By the way, how is how is unemployment driving that? So they're higher unemployment than more gig economy. Okay, yeah, that does make sense to me. Right, and what's our dilemma? Air airport expansion. Yeah, no, we are not going to re uh, we are not going to allow that. It's going to bring down tourism, but that's fine. Um, yeah, because it's just not going to work out. Um, speaking of air travel, how is that looking? It's going down here since we did incre uh, include the frequent flyer tax over here. So that is kind of interesting. And how's the economy doing? Uh, the environment doing? It's coming down a little, and that's due to the effect of the GDP. So that is not great. A lot of things are coming into play here, but it is going to take a while. Car usage plummeting really since we banned cars from cities. So that is going to come down further, I think. So what's the final effect here? Well, four more percentage points. High race subsidiaries. That's 10 more percentage points. Yeah, and over here 14 more. So yeah, that's that's going to come down very consistently here. But I'm still worried a little bit about the air travel here. I think the frequent fly attacks is going to make a further dent, but is it going to be enough? I mean, in terms of CO2 emissions, we are of course fine, but still I'm not quite happy with that. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to increase the level of flight taxes. Yeah, that is going to bring down air travel. It's going to decrease GDP a little bit, but that's not our main concern here. Envi environmentalists love it. Tourism is going to go down. But yeah, tourism is is sort of an, a, a tricky thing to begin with. Okay, no terrorists for now. That's that's good to see. And how are motorists looking? How's your membership looking? Yeah, it's just dropping because of uh, these various things over here. There's still a lot of traffic congestion. What we could do is go for the congestion charging. Not a terrible idea. Our subsidies could also be a thing. Right, let's go for congestion charging. It's going to drive down the happiness of motorists, which I think is fine. And it's going to drive down car usage and congestion. So you might actually come out to be happier uh, than you were before. And it's going to give us a little bit of money, so, so that's nice to see. Right, what else for our neighborhood? Um, yeah, that's not great. We've got a new donor. That's also nice to see. Cyberbullying, oh, cyber, no, so, sorry, cyber warfare, and that's actually tipping, ticking up now. So that's interesting to see. Well, technology is, is pretty high, isn't it? 
intelligence services, we might need to up the spending on our intelligence services a little bit, just so that we prevent this from happening. Foreign relations are also not a great, a great drive of that. Yeah, and the religious people are back again, making some noises. That's not altogether too bad, so... Yeah, I think that's fine. Our air usage is dropping. The environment is uh, stabilizing, at least, so that's that's definitely nice to see. And GDP is pretty much maxed out at this point, so... At least it's not going to get any, any worse, so I, I think that's fine, then. Anything else that we really want to do at this point? This is driving up car usage a little bit, but all in all, I'm not too afraid of this. Trade unions hate it, of course, but it's also driving down motorist membership. So I think as people can rely on, uh, you know, Uber Drive, uh, Uber Eat or something, uh, they don't need to own a car themselves, which is certainly true in the cities or in some cities. So yeah, I think that's nice to see. Alcohol awareness, yeah, that's... Important to keep that down. Yeah, but honestly, other than that, we are doing great. Is that does that have an effect on the environment? Yeah, it does. So let's implement it. Even though it's a little bit uh, weird, why why that would have a direct effect on the environment other than CO two. Oh, that would drive down our energy industry by a lot. I suppose that's fine, we don't need an energy industry if we can keep everyone in this box. And it is bringing up the membership of environmentalists to a very, very high degree. So, yeah, happy about that. You know what, that's actually a great policy for us. So, good to see. GM food proposal? Okay, so, so here's the thing, right? This is an eco run um, and a green run. And traditionally, green parties typically in most of the world do strongly oppose the use of genetically modified um, crops. Nevertheless, there are some benefits to this because it's less taxing on land usage and it's less taxing um, on some pesticides. So we could allow that and I'm, I'm actually personally very much in favor um, of genetically modified crops in general if they are tested appropriately. So there are, there are certain caveats that do apply, but you know what, we are going to allow that for now. Environmentalists really hate us for that, um, and capitalists do like us, but I think it's it's going to be okay. Right, cyberbullying is, is still fine. So, yeah, I think still, you know what, environmentalists still are as happy as they can be. And it's nice to see that the membership is coming up too, because that is going to lead to our party being ever so, ever so more popular. So I think that's that's nice to see. I'm slightly concerned about your happiness, my friend. You're not going to contribute as much as you did before. I don't know why you are so crumpy, though. I mean, parents should be over the moon at this point, right? Since we did stop all of the... Yeah, see? Their happiness has gone up incredibly substantially. So I don't know why you're a little bit upset about that, but... Yeah, some of these people you just can't, can't get to be that happy. Right, motorists at this point are, are super, super unhappy. Their membership should also continue to plummet. So, yeah, I think that's that's going to be alright. Right, and at this point, we're kind of running out of policies here to, to actually implement. Satellite road pricing is, is a very interesting one, and I do find it's amazing that it's costing 45 political points to implement that. Because why does it, though? So, yeah, I don't, I don't quite get that. Ooh. Motorist income, traffic congestion would go down, equality would go down, commuters would go up, motorists would love us even less, but car usage. I think car usage is still one of our most important concerns. How much are we spending on some of these other things? So we could, for example, just increase that over here. Yeah, but it's just minimal effect. Right, everything else has been maxed out already, except for biofuel subsidies, which I don't necessarily like, because they are driving up fuel prices and they are increasing land usage. So, yeah, I think that's actually a no-no there. 
So toll roads or bus subsidies. We're still running such a big surplus. You know what? Let's go for bus subsidies. I think that's fine. Commuters do like it. Motorists do not like it. Bus usage is, bus usage is going to go up very substantially. Unemployment only a little bit, but I think that's that's okay. Right. And then anything else in terms of transport? Yeah, the toll roads are out of the picture now. Free bus passes. I'm not too sold on that because it's just not going to increase that so much. So I think that's that's all right, basically. Right. Food labeling. Well, plant-based diets are nice. Let's implement that. Capitalists do slightly dislike it, but I think I think I'm fine with it. So that's that's okay. There is a merger of large internet companies. I think we're gonna block that. Capitalists don't like it. Trade unions do like it a little bit, but that's just not uh, a lot of them. So that's fine. Economic forecasts, yeah. And at this point, I think our GDP has maxed out. <laughs> this is this is kind of crazy. I'm I'm doing a run here where I'm deliberately prioritizing the environment over the economy, and still the economy is maxed out. So sometimes this game does have some some curious curious um, effects over here. Nevertheless, I think in CO2, we are basically at nil over here, right? So, yeah, that's that's great. How are we doing in terms of car and, and aircraft usage? Air travel is still... It's still a thing, right? So that's, that's still kind of high. Cars are coming down very much. Yeah, that's that's just a huge effect over here. And the cars that are there, it's at this point 100% of them are actually electric cars. So, yeah, it's, that's that's very nice, isn't it? Rail usage is uh, kind of where it needs to be. I think I'm I'm perfectly kind of happy with where we are. We could do things like international fusion reactors. It would do, drive down oil demand. Foreign relations would go up. Can we do anything else to increase foreign relations, though? I don't think we can. We've basically done the most things that we can. Well, we could increase foreign aid. Citizenship tests, I don't think that is what we want to do. Diplomatic service. Yeah, we might actually want to increase foreign aid here a little bit. At least until this point. It's not that expensive, but it's going to increase foreign relations a lot, and that does decrease uh, the chances of some of these nasty things happening. Let's do that. It's going to decrease the happiness of the Patriots, but they do have some other things to be happy about, including, let's say, the space program. Strong leader, tech advantage, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these things are nice to see. But it's also driving up their membership, so that's that's a double-edged sword. If we were to bring that up a little bit, uh, curiously enough, the number of religious people would go down somewhat. Which is interesting, isn't it? But yeah, let's do that. Let's drive up technology a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see uh, what's happening here. So yeah, garbage scam. Ooh, that's not nice. Situation Im imminent. Yeah, okay, we are going to get the cyber warfare. That is nasty. We do need to get rid of that as soon as possible. Why did it go up so drastically, though? We did have that. Well, because of GDP, probably. And, well, we're also increasing technology, so that's fair. And foreign relations, we didn't improve that early enough, so ah, that's that's a bit of an issue. But, nevertheless, I think that's that's fine. So, what we can do to address that is go to secret services. So, I think that's you guys, right? Intelligence services. Let's do cre increase your funding. It's not going to make the liberals very happy, but I think it's, it's simply important to do that. We could go for very drastic measures, like online stuff where do we have that internet censorship it wouldn't be it wouldn't be conductive i think to to our overall to our overall profile here so yeah let's let's just not do that for a moment yeah i think that's that's fine um interesting that racial profiling is a policy that you can implement instead of something that just happens to be there um, whenever some police officers do human things and use their prejudices. Right, anything else that, that we want to do? Stem cell research? 
I think we are fine in that regard, right? So, there's no pressing concern for anything over here. Well, foreign relations and education. You know what? Let's do compulsory things. Let's do go for the cheaper one. I think that is with um, people who are patriots don't like that. Okay, interesting. Capitalists do like it. Foreign investment is going to go up and foreign relations just a tiny bit. Okay, nevertheless, let's do applied. Um, and I think I'm going to just go directly. It's going to waste a couple of political points, but it's, it's going to be okay. Right, so intelligence services, that is going to drive that down by around 20 percentage points. It's not quite enough to go below that trigger over here. Nevertheless, foreign relations are going to go up by quite a bit. So I think that might be enough to, to ultimately get rid of the cyber warfare. What the... Ooh, Jesus. That's driving down our economy by a lot. Yeah, we're going to ban non-LEDs because they're way too inefficient. Energy efficiency is going to go up nicely over here. By the way, how is that looking? So, energy efficiency pff, maxed out for a long time. So, yeah, lovely, lovely, very good. Okay, um, anything else then that we want to do that's just like a huge, big um, political power investment over here. Just so we have everything at our hands. Antibiotics ban? Yeah, that's actually that's actually an important thing. Farmers don't like that. Food prices are going to go up. Well, that's interesting because ultimately that should go down. But antibiotic resistant bacteria, if that would happen, that would just not be a good thing. So I think that actually might be, might be the way to go over here. But I'm not quite sure. Definitely don't want to do any mining stuff. Don't want to increase the number of capitalists in our country because they are a little bit worrisome um, for us at the moment. So, yeah, plastic bags, no. Anything else? Stem cell research, it's interesting, but I don't think really required at this point. Law and order, yeah, we could do a lot of funny things, but... I mean, how's car usage looking for now? I think it must be pretty much close to zero, right? Yeah, it's dropping so quickly. And the environment is so happy about that. And air travel has, has basically had a very low impact over here. And we are at zero CO2, so we could close we could close all airports. That would be kind of a funny, funny way to approach that. Anything else that we can do in terms of law and order to, to address the cyber warfare thing? I don't think we can. We could bring up our military funding a little bit again. That might be a way to go. Oh, that doesn't actually have an impact on that. Interesting. Huh, I did not know that. That's, that's interesting to see. Right, hopefully it's going to come down on its own. So yeah, we're kind of out of policies to, to add on. Energy efficiency, well, it's already very high, so... Yeah, really no point doing that. We could do vertical farms. Would bring down unemployment a little bit. Would bring down traffic congestion. Would bring down the water shortage, which we don't have, but which would be nasty to get. So let's do that. I think that's fine. Still have a lot of things over here. City farms, yeah, farmers would be happy in everything, but it's not that important, is it? Tech grants, no, I don't think that's something that we need. We're fine where we are, basically. Yeah, I think, I think all in all, we are pretty much out of policies to to implement over here. Yes, there's the CO2 tax, but why, why do we do with that if we have basically zero emissions? So yeah, I, th I think we are fine over here. Yeah. Good. Right, so you know what? I'm going to just click through this and uh, see what's going to happen over here. Okay, yeah, unemployment is going to go down a little bit. Nice. Vertical farm subsidies. Yes, end of recycling law. End life recycling. Yeah, we are going to pass that because throwing stuff away is just not good. And GDP is actually trending up again here, so yeah, we've 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 recovered from the cyber warfare over here, which is interesting, isn't it?
How's the gig economy looking? Still high, and that's driven by various factors over here. But yeah, the climate change adaptation fund is doing its thing. And the environment is... You know what, guys? The environment is at 100% over here. And the CO2 emissions are at zero, and they have been at zero for a long time. Car usage is all but abolished in our society. People are still using aircraft, but it's coming down somewhat significantly over here. So, honestly, I think we are fine over here. Can we can we step back and uh, take? Can we can we basically resign? I don't know whether there's any possibility to do that. Um, I think there must be some way to see how our society has changed. Yeah, there we go. So let's look at what happened over here um, since we took office for the first time. So traffic congestion has gone down by 92%. I love it. Lifespan has gone up by 92%. We have pretty much at maxed out, um, maxed out effects there, so that's great to see. Car usage gone down 87%. Health has gone up 82%. CO2 emissions now at zero. Plant-based diets. Nearly everyone is is a vegetarian now, so interesting. Environment at 100% from less than that less than 30 percent where it used to be nice electric car transition basically fully there immigration has gone up I hope that's not really something that we specifically aim for but it's interesting to see energy efficiency going up racial tensions Ooh, these these are going up significantly over here and it's I think that would be something that would certainly affect us at some point and that's mainly an effect of the immigration over here which is coming down due to well, very high GDP and very lax border controls, but it's not an issue that we do need to con be, be concerned about. Racial tensions going up somewhat, oil prices coming down, uh, that's nice to see because we are using less oil. Bus usage going up, food prices actually did come down, crime basically disappeared. Oil demand, where is it? Yeah, it's not quite at zero, but uh, very close to it, so that's, that's good to see. And then we've got currency strength is going up, GDP. Ah, nice productivity up energy industry we are basically all producing our own energy in this society so that's nice to see foreign relations going up healthcare demand is going down population has gone up by 24 percent well a lot of immigration right alcohol consumption has gone down foreign investment gone up telecoms industry down average temperature is so that's the world average temperature here um, and since we have done very little in terms of co2 this has actually come down somewhat, so that's actually that's actually very nice to see, but it's probably a little bit uh, overblown in terms of the effect that we had over here. It's still good to see. Tobacco usage down. All of these things have uh, gone up. Well, this at least gone up, which is definitely nice. Education. Poverty down. Violent crime down. Stability. This, I I'm, I'm, must admit, I'm not completely against this, this society. Everyone is, is a little bit better off, right? Um, and if we were to look at the voting intentions, we would be getting 99.8% uh, of the vote over here. So, that's good to see. And... Okay, so interesting, interesting graphics over here. Voter types. So, commuters are incredibly happy. Environmentalists are, retired people are. The poor are reasonably happy. And any focus groups? No, I don't think that's that's fine. Where do we stand in terms of the political um, political compass over here? It's interesting to see that the game still considers us to be extremely capitalist and stuff socialist, um, and it's definitely shifting us towards the liberal space over here. So this is basically where we are going, and we are somewhat close to Ayn Rand. Well, I'm not sure that is a good comparison, but you know what, my friends? I think this video has gone long enough. So thank you very much for watching and being part of this series. I am going to conclude, uh, I'm, I'm going to continue uh, some Democracy Forum because Germany has just been released. Uh, and I'm very in intrigued to take a look at that country. So, that being said, hope you enjoyed. Do leave a like and do hope to see you around next time. Bye bye.